Well, good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Peter Clinch, and I'm chairman of the board of Science Foundation Ireland. And on behalf of the board of SFI, it's my really great pleasure to welcome you to the launch of the agency's new strategy, Shaping Our Future. Uh, in particular, uh, I'd like to welcome uh, Antishuk Michal Martin, TD. We are honored, Antishuk, that you're joining us today. I would also like to welcome Simon Harris, TD, uh, the minister who so I understand holds the record for having the widest business card in government as he's Minister for Further and Higher Education, Research, Innovation and Science. And thank you for being here, Simon, and thank you to you and your officials and advisors for rapidly establishing such an effective working relationship with the board of SFI and the agency as a whole. Over the next hour, you'll hear from, from Antishuk and the Minister, followed by the Director General of SFI, Mark Ferguson. As you know, research funding only produces great results when we have great researchers and great partners in industry and the policy world. So I'm delighted to say we'll follow up with contributions from Professor Luke O'Neill, Professor Tia Keyes, Professor Valeria Nicolosi, Danny McCoy, CEO of IBEC, Mark Redmond, CEO of the American Chamber, and many more. The Deputy Director General of SFI, Kiran Shoga, will then bring you through some of the details of the new strategy and will be joined by SFI Directors Ruth Freeman and Siobhan Roach for a panel discussion. And that provides an important opportunity for you to ask questions. Uh, Science Foundation Ireland's new strategy, Shaping Our Future, is an ambitious one. It has to be. Ireland's competitiveness, our levels of inward investment, the productivity of firms of all sizes, our wages and standards of living, our jobs and the jobs of our children, all depend upon Ireland being a productive economy and the economic evidence is clear that the vast majority of economic growth and prosperity is delivered by increases in productivity, which in turn depend upon the innovation intensity of the economy. Investment in research, both fundamental and applied, is a key determinant of the long run success and prosperity of Ireland and its people. And in order to secure our current economic prosperity and to protect our future, we must invest in research that matches that of our competitors and we must invest in the capacity to deal with anticipated and unanticipated societal challenges. Prior investment in our scientific capacity has shown its value in so many areas, and this is particularly evident, as you all know, from the contribution of our researchers to addressing the challenges of COVID-19. In developing this strategy, we, SFI, recognize the need to fund both fundamental and applied research. We see the need to support the work of early stage researchers, established individuals and larger research collectives, we set out the importance of working with enterprise and the public sector and collaborating across borders. And we recognize the need to engage collaborative, collaboratively with researchers and our higher education institutions and to work together across government departments, funding agencies and enterprise agencies. We've reflected the need to increase public engagement with science and support a pipeline of talent from school children to world leading research professors. This is what SFI must do to secure a core building block for Ireland's future. Our vision is that Ireland will be a global innovation leader in scientific and engineering research for the advancement of Ireland's economy and society. By delivering today while preparing for tomorrow, the new strategy is designed to meet current challenges and to position Ireland to take advantage of future opportunities. And in doing so, it will support the priorities outlined in Ireland's programme for government, our shared future, and the objectives of the National Recovery Plan and National Development Plan. We're very pleased to be working with the newly established Department of Further and Higher Education, Research, Innovation and Science across other departments and agencies to foster a cohesive research and innovation ecosystem that will really support Ireland's competitiveness, a rapid recovery from the COVID-19 crisis and support the adaptation to Brexit. We'll support researchers to help ensure Ireland's resilience to climate change, future pandemics and other challenges that can arise in the future. While I have the opportunity, I'd like to thank the board for their considerable work on shaping this new strategy. I'd also like to thank members of the strategy team and the executive from whom you'll hear later. I'd also like to thank the wonderful and highly committed staff of the agency and take the opportunity to congratulate the researchers, and many of you are on today's uh, broadcast, the researchers we support for continuing to undertake excellent research in what are very difficult circumstances for you. It is easy but highly damaging to put investment in research on the long finger. With the formal establishment of SFI in 2003, Irish politicians demonstrated great foresight and ambition by understanding that investment in research would be a prerequisite for a high-performing Irish economy and a vibrant society. When it comes to research and innovation, I believe Micheál Martin embodies all of that ambition and all of that foresight. 
in former roles as Minister for Education and Science and Minister for Enterprise, Trade and Employment, Michal demonstrated a clear personal and professional dedication to the importance of investment in research and development as key building blocks for a successful innovation and knowledge-intensive economy and a vibrant society supporting successful companies, providing quality jobs and financing high-quality public services. As Taoiseach, Michal has further advanced this agenda with the establishment of a senior ministry bringing together further and higher education, research, innovation and science under the successful stewardship of Simon Harris. It's a sign of Michal's commitment to research and science that he's agreed to join us today to launch SFI's new strategy, Shaping Our Future. And it's my great pleasure to introduce on Taoiseach, Michal Martin, TD. Thank you very much indeed, and Peter, and thank you for your very, very kind uh, comments. And I would like to thank everyone uh, at Science Foundation Ireland for the invitation uh, to join you today uh, for the formal launch of SFI's new strategy, Shaping Our Future. At this tough moment for Ireland and the world as a whole, no one can miss the central role which cutting edge science still has to play in delivering hope in the face of even the darkest challenges. The last year has seen an unprecedented deployment of scientific expertise to tackle the pandemic. The magnificent achievement of developing effective vaccines from scratch in months is only one part of this. Epidemiology has helped us to grasp the scale of the threat and develop policy responses. Medical technology and therapeutics have rapidly evolved in our hospitals. Even in areas like software development and engineering, advances have helped limit severe economic damage on many sectors and are underpinning the complex logistics which underpin treatment, testing, tracking and vaccination programs. We are very lucky that in Ireland there is and has been for many years strong public support for the idea that science is important for our economic, social and environmental well-being. We understood this before the pandemic, but we understand it even more today. I believe that investment in science isn't an option for Ireland. It is absolutely essential. It is essential if we are to achieve and maintain high living standards for our people in the modern economy. It is essential if we are to meet the challenge of the climate emergency. It is essential if we are to protect and promote the health of our people. The development of a diverse and world-class scientific base has been a personal commitment of mine throughout my public life. One of the first memos I brought to government as a minister was to create the Department of Education's first dedicated fund for advanced research. At different times in different government departments, as Peter has said, I've held responsibility for and have been involved in creating or overseeing major parts of the Irish research system, except for Togusk which has itself developed an unmatched record of collaboration with other institutions. During this time, I saw many wonderful ideas developed from outline proposals into research groups, which are now amongst the most impactful in the world. The ideas which they have generated, and more importantly, the people who they have trained, provide the core foundation for large parts of our modern economy. By any objective measure, the Irish scientific research community has achieved enormous things in just over two decades. The scale and quality of research being carried out here and its reputation in the world has been transformed. An enormous amount has been achieved, but we must always remember the need to look forward and move forward. Many of our biggest employers today did not exist 25 years ago. Because we have been successful in the past, does not mean we have any basis for being complacent now, complacent now. I want to assure you today of this government's deep commitment to research and innovation. A dramatic mark of this has been the creation of the Department of Further and Higher Education, Research, Innovation and Science. For the first time, Irish science has a place at the cabinet table in a distinct ministry charged with leading this area. And I'm delighted to be here today with Simon Harris, the first minister to hold this important brief. The process of developing our revised strategy is already underway, overseen by Simon and involving every aspect of government. It is particularly in this context 
that I welcome Science Foundation Ireland's new strategy and the deep reflection which the Foundation has undertaken in order to prepare it. A willingness to reflect, to seek areas of improvement and to be open to accountability is the very essence of good science. And I'm very pleased to see it reflected in the approach taken to this strategy. Before I mention a number of the specific proposals and the strategy, I would like to set it in the context of the government's thinking about how we move forward. An important challenge for us as a country is to move away from thinking in terms of building institutions, which was necessary and even essential work in the past, and to re review and to reaffirm key principles for our future. The scientific method, which has revolutionized the modern world, did tell us what, advantage, uh, what advances would emerge over the years, but it has given us the critical framework within which to work. In the same way, we need to operate public policy on a science in general and research in particular within a soundly based framework. To me, there are four core principles which we need to renew our focus on. The first principle is to support excellence. This may seem obvious, but actually it was once very much optional in funding. When the PRTLI, SFI, and what is now called the Irish Research Council were established, we then took a radical decision, decision of removing ministers and officials from all decision making. No institution has an automatic right to a share and the eminence of your advocates no longer mattered for more than the quality of your proposal. Independent peer review where possible international and always with a zero tolerance for conflicts of interest is, to, is the key to sustained excellence and we must protect and strengthen it. I am very glad that we've moved beyond the very rigid debate about applied and basic research, which consumed too much time a number of years ago. Ireland needs both. And in fact, we cannot be competitive in one without also being strong in the other. Yes, Ireland seeks to develop particular areas above, but we also understand that in modern science, the range of disciplines you need in particular fields is constantly changing. You simply cannot afford to be too restrictive. The continued centrality of international peer review and the commitment to excellence in SFI's research funding is a critical part of what we value in this new strategy. The next principle is collaboration. To meet its potential, Ireland must have active collaboration between funders and between institutions. A review of Ireland's research achievements by a former head of the European Research Council identified the synergies between different institutions and funders as critical to our progress. The institutional development strategies of the universities, the BRTLI's focus on infrastructure, and the different levels and types of awards administered by different funding bodies ensured a diverse, competitive, and highly effective research base. It should be said that achieving collaboration between institutions does have a limit, and that limit is where you lose the active competition, which is the lifeblood of much scientific innovation. We also need to continue to develop collaborations with industry. In this context, the many challenging targets which SFI has set for industrial collaborations in the next five years is very welcome. The next guiding principle for us must be to be international. This applies both to the standards we set ourselves and to expand our international collaborations. This is something which we will be considering in more detail in the future. But for the moment, I can say that the government views deepening research connections with other European countries as a priority. I very much appreciate the work SFI has done in fostering international collaborations in the past and look forward to its work in this area in, in the years ahead. Ireland has strong internationally recognized strengths in key sectors of which SFI research centers are an important element. The final core principle for us is to develop the full potential for research as a pillar of our shared island. There's tremendous untapped potential for innovation on this island. And one of the critical elements for unleashing this is for all parts of the island to work together
to achieve goals which benefit everyone. A very good example of this is the field of sustainable energy, where this island is developing a real expertise. An important driver of this has been North-South cooperation in energy research. We need to advance collaboration and clustering. It is one of the key aims of the new shared island unit that I've established in the Department of the Taoiseach. A North-South programme of research and innovation, including an all-island research hub, is a major priority. Capital funding allocated through a PRTLI-like process will help kickstart this, and I've already met with Minister Harris, and we're both very committed to developing and rolling this out. These principles of excellence, collaboration, international involvement, and a new shared island approach underpin the work which we are now doing on our new national research and innovation strategy. The dual stated ambitions of, FF, of SFI's strategy, delivering today and preparing for tomorrow, are particularly pertinent. As we steer Ireland through immediate and difficult economic and social challenges, we must look ahead to the challenges and indeed opportunities of the future. SFI's commitments to working to improve the lives of our people and to help drive global solutions across climate action, health and sustainable economic development is very welcome. The government's strategy for research and innovation will build capacity and capability across the research and innovation system. Its objective will be to be an enabler of the next major phase of development of Ireland's research capacities. I would like to take a moment to thank all those in our higher education institutions who've adopted and provided education in novel and innovative ways throughout the pandemic. Our talented people are our greatest asset, nurturing and investing in our people and their skills is our, our paramount. As I conclude, I want to thank you for your continued commitment to ensuring that Ireland can be proud of its place in the global research and development field and can compete at the highest levels. I very much welcome Science Foundation Ireland's new strategy. I wish you all the best with the implementation of this strategy over the coming years and look forward to working with you to achieve this. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much indeed, Taoiseach, and thank you very much for your strong support for research in Ireland. It's deeply appreciated. We share your ambition to have research contribute even more to uh, Irish society and economy, and we look forward to working with you and with the new department in delivering on the new strategy and enhancing Ireland's standing in research and innovation around the world for the benefit of the Irish people. And thank you so much, Taoiseach, for taking time out of your very busy schedule to be uh, with us today for the virtual launch of our new strategy. It's now my great pleasure to introduce uh, Minister Simon Harris, uh, who is the Minister in Charge of the new Department of Further and Higher Education, Research, Innovation and Science, and who's been a strong supporter of all of those words, uh, all of those activities uh, since he's taken office. Uh, Minister, uh, I would like to thank you and your department officials uh, for your help and support in developing this new strategy. And it's my great pleasure to introduce you to say a few words. Minister Harris. Th thank you very much, uh, Mark. Good morning, everyone. And thank you, Taoiseach. Uh, thank you, Peter. Um, I want to begin by, by sincerely acknowledging and thanking the Taoiseach for his foresight in establishing this new department. Uh, every day I'm in this department, I become more and more convinced that it simply would not be possible to apply the level of focus uh, and attention uh, that needs to be applied to science, to research, to innovation, and to its collaboration and work throughout our higher education institutions, uh, were it not for the existence of a standalone department uh, with representation at the cabinet table. I do believe that Taoiseach's decision to establish this department will in time be seen as a defining moment in preparing for our country's future, and in securing Ireland's economic and societal resilience, and quite frankly, in helping this country rebuild and recover uh, after the most difficult of years. I am delighted and honoured to be the, the temporary custodian of this ministerial office and to be Ireland's first ever minister for that very long title. But it is a long title because each of the words matter and each of the words interplay indeed with each other as we try to achieve that objective. Um, I do believe the establishment of this department could not have come 
as a more crucial, as a more critical time. Our world is still struggling with COVID-19, but there's finally something we've been missing. There's hope. There is hope on the horizon. And that hope hasn't come about through vague aspiration. It's come about thanks to science, thanks to research. It is because of the effort of scientists and researchers that we now have safe and effective vaccines with more on the way. It will be scientists and researchers who will find therapies to treat people who become sick with this awful virus. It's scientists and researchers who have responded to our COVID call uh, from SFI coming up with new ways to help steer us through this pandemic, to help us save lives and keep people well. Today, as we look to the next five years with hope and with optimism, it is important to say thank you, to say Garamila Mahagov to the Irish science and research community who have brought our country and our globe to this point. However, we must also know that this will not be the last pandemic we will face. And we know that this is certainly not the final time we will rely on our science and research community to chart the path out of a crisis, uh, be that an environmental crisis, a public health crisis, a housing crisis. All of the major global and national challenges we face require our scientists and our researchers. They require our best and our brightest. And that is, as I said, why I believe that this department's establishment has never been needed more than now. Governments right across the world have a responsibility. In fact, they have a duty to invest in science and in research. And in the last few weeks and months, we've started. In budget 2021, we secured an additional 30 million euro for our research ecosystem allowing us to support elements of this ambitious strategy through increased government investment. Among the new supports that we want to see rolled out this year will be a joint initiative between SFI and the Irish Research Council to support early career researchers. If we want top quality research, we've got to support those delivering that. We want to see a new initiative to support our institutes of technology and our technological universities to engage in research. It's so important we continue to plug them into the ecosystem. And as our Taoiseach has said, we want to and believe it's vital to further strengthen North-South research links and expect to have a number of exciting developments in that space in the coming weeks and months. This new strategy, which I'm honoured to be launching with the Taoiseach today, focuses on delivering today while preparing for tomorrow. Delivering today means developing Ireland's top talent, building on our excellent research base and maximizing tangible benefits for our country in the immediate future, in the here and now. Preparing for tomorrow though, means ensuring that we have a cohesive system, that we foster new talent and skills, and that we prepare to give Ireland first mover advantage when it comes to emerging technologies. As we look to build a fairer and more sustainable economy, shaping our future supports key aims, the need to drive equality within the research and innovation sector, the need to advance social cohesion and inclusion, and crucially contributing to the public good and Ireland's societal challenges. Research and innovation is not something over there. It's something that must be at the core of all that we do as a government, all that we do as policy makers. This strategy places a priority on building competitive research to ensure we're contenders, both in Europe and internationally. For us to realise our ambitions in the near and the long term, we must invest in people. It has to be about human capital, from high quality PhD programmes, such as the Centres for Research Training, right through to attracting top talent, as well, of course, as the infrastructure required to enable their research and development. This focus and the investment to support it will ensure that as a country, we're in a position to anticipate what's next and to be ready to respond, to lead, in relation to emerging technologies for the advancement of our economy and our people. As we look towards Ireland's future, I and my department and the government are deeply committed and ambitious for research and science in Ireland. We can see that by the Taoiseach's attendance here at this launch today. Quite frankly, being anything else, anything other than committed and ambitious is not an option. No one owes this country a living. We need to be leaders, not laggards. We need to be prepared not just to go along with the disruption, but to try and get ahead of it and to try and harness that for the benefit of our country. It's true that we understand now more than ever the importance and value of research and science in our lives. We will never be forgiven if we squander this opportunity. 
this once in a generation moment that this awful pandemic has presented to excite our country, to excite our people about science and innovation and to respond in kind in terms of investment and policies and plans. So over the next 12 months, my department, working very closely with Science Foundation Ireland, will be focused on carrying out a national conversation between the general public and our research community. This conversation will talk about what is already happening, but crucially, it won't just look to the current. It will ask what research questions and challenges are most important to the Irish people. In the meantime, this strategy rightly sets down very ambitious targets for the sector. I want us to continue to be bold as a nation. And I've no doubt shaping our future will enable, foster and support the creation and the development of solutions to many of the challenges we face today and will fuel our future success. I want to thank Antishak for his support when I brought the SFI strategy before government. I want to thank everybody working in SFI. In my few months in this role, I must say I am so impressed by the enthusiasm, the can-do attitude, and quite frankly, the patriotism of people working in SFI and people serving on the board of Science Foundation Ireland. I want to thank Peter and Mark for embedding that ethos right across the teams. And I congratulate everybody in SFI for the work being done to date to support our researchers and for that commitment they bring to everything they do. I really look forward to working with you in implementing this ambitious strategy. There is no doubt this is our moment. This is a moment of national, a moment of a national test, a global test, and how we respond to this as a country, how SFI respond as an agency will determine our future economic and societal well-being. That's the call we must respond to, and I know together we will. Gervmila Mogov. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Minister Harris. Thank you for your support. Thank you for the support of your department and for joining us virtually today uh, at this virtual launch of our new strategy. As you've said, uh, the past year has witnessed enormous contributions from research and innovation, uh, vaccines, therapeutics, managing the COVID-19 crisis. And it's shown things that were previously thought impossible. Nobody thought it was possible to develop an effective vaccine inside a year. Everyone would have said 10 years but we did it. And you can see in the last few weeks the spectacular landing of the scientific remote vehicle Perseverance on Mars. And you also saw the impish creativity of the NASA scientists who used the sequence of the red and white circles on Perseverance landing parachute to spell out in ASCII 2 code the message, Dare Mighty Things. And dare mighty things is an interesting uh, set of words for this new strategy uh, from Science Foundation Ireland. Discovery, invention, and innovation fuel great progress. The world is not getting any less technological. So we need to respond. There are many new tools available, supercomputing, synthetic biology, artificial intelligence, advanced imaging, to name but a few. And there are many exciting discoveries yet to be made. There has never been a more exciting time to be alive in science. And these discoveries have the potential to transform societies and to bring pros prosperity to those who discover and embrace them. And here in Ireland, we want to play a role and we want to benefit. We want to see societal and economic transformation through science, invention and innovation and we intend to support and build our research over the coming years. I believe that there's great potential, enormous opportunity, but more importantly, the system is ready. And what do I mean by that? Well, the focus of SFI's previous strategy, Agenda 2020, was on increasing the effectiveness and efficiency of the Irish research development and innovation system. And this was successful, Look at an external measure. Eurostats from the European Union now cites Ireland as the most R&D efficient country in Europe, extracting more innovation output per euro of public funds than any other country. And this is also evidenced by a number of other factors. The Irish research success in Horizon 2020. For the first time in our history, Ireland has won more competitive funding more than 1.25 billion euros, than it contributes to the Horizon 2020 budget. 
Look at the scale of industry engagement and co-funding through the SFI Research Centers and Centers for Research Training and Partnership Awards. Look at the scale of higher education collaboration through the research centers and the centers for research training. And look at our development of international collaborations with partnerships such as the National Science Foundation, the National Institute of Health, UK Research and Innovation, the Royal Society, the Wellcome Trust, and so on. But there are limits to efficiency gains. And the system now needs and is prepared for increased investment. And this is evidenced by the increasing reserve lists of excellent and impactful proposals for which SFI has insufficient budget. So failure to invest now will mean that we don't reap the advantages of the future. Other countries are increasing their investment. We do not want them to outcompete us to create more knowledge or innovative products or services or jobs than we can do. So our new strategy is ambitious but it's what's required. It's absolutely required in order to shape the talent, to shape the innovative products, and to shape the businesses and transform the businesses for the future. And in developing Shaping Our Future, our new strategy, we took a holistic, collaborative, and consultative approach, meeting with international funding agencies to explore international best practice, meeting over a thousand individuals and representatives within Ireland, from the research community, enterprise, government bodies, agencies, and so on. And I'd really like to take this opportunity to thank all of those who participated in those consultations. The strategy is the better for it. The strategy aims to both help solve today's problems and to create tomorrow's opportunities. Later, Dr. Kieran Shoiga, a Deputy Director General of SFI, who led on the development of the strategy, will take you through the main points and also show you how we've already started to implement some parts of the strategy. We are ambitious, but that's what's required. This strategy is tunable. It allows programs to be launched in line with available budget. But a good outcome would be a 15% budget increase compound year on year over the five years of the strategy. We know that public investment in research in the higher education sector is a critical part of a successful R&D ecosystem. We also know that that investment crowds in private investment. We need both. We need public investment to catalyze us to be able to win in Europe and broader afield, and we need public investment to catalyze the co-investment uh, from the private sector. Science Foundation Ireland demands many things of the researchers we support. And that's because as an organization, we are passionate about what we do. We are passionate about building and supporting the very best RDNI system, about supporting excellent researchers with excellent ideas who want to make a difference and who do so. And in doing so, we believe we should do it correctly, looking at diversity, looking at integrity, all of the important things that are in science but also making it fun. You have to have fun in terms of doing creative and interesting things. And I want to thank all those across government, academia, business, charities, national and international funders, the experts, and many, many more who contributed to our strategy. I particularly like to thank Peter Clinch and the board of Science Foundation Ireland uh, for their ongoing support. And of course, for the excellent SFI staff for all of their commitment uh, to both our daily work and to the development of the strategy. I'd particularly like to thank Antishuk and Minister Harris for attending today and for supporting us in launching our new strategy. The difference between a strategy and reality is execution. And working with the new department and all our partners, SFI intends to execute on this strategy so that Ireland can become a green, sustainable, deep tech, knowledge-driven society and a strong economy at the heart of Europe. As we say in Science Foundation Ireland, we fund research that makes a real difference to our society and our economy, both now and into the future. Thank you for joining us today uh, for the launch of our strategy and we will now hear from some researchers. 
So Science Foundation Ireland has been very important to me. I've had several grants of SFI over the years. Uh, a really important one was back in 2012 when I explored a brand new idea to do with inflammatory diseases and I had a program grant funded by SFI. I had a team of maybe six people on that grant. We made a very important discovery backed by SFI, which led to me forming a spin-out company from my lab Infinity called Inflazome. And the intellectual property transferred from Trinity into Inflazome under a licensing agreement. We raised over 50 million in investment actually to uh, get that company off the ground. And Inflazome began in 2016. We discovered two brand new anti-inflammatory molecules and we proved these molecules cut off potential in Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, colitis, asthma, many inflammatory diseases involve a specific pathway in the immune system, which I'd worked on in my SFI funded program called NLRP3. And then wonderfully for our investors, we had several venture capital investors, including Fountain, an Irish backed VC, who in turn were funded by the Irish Strategic Investment Fund. And we exited the company and Roche bought Inflazome, great return for investors and the shareholders and my university who were shareholders as well and the exchequer as well because of the uh, strategic investment fund and what's fantastic is Roche will now take our discovery all the way to the clinic and they'll be exploring the effect of our drugs in these huge diseases. The clinical trials will begin very very soon. So in many ways it's a virtuous circle. So Science Foundation Ireland fund my lab, tremendous taxpayers' money goes into my lab. We recruit and employ people. And by the way, several of those people left my lab and got jobs in industry and academia, so built their careers. But I guess more importantly, we de developed a new company which generated income for the Irish Exchequer and indeed for the university and various other shareholders. And finally, most importantly of all, this research will benefit patients. Our fingers are crossed now that Roche will take our medicines all the way to these very, very significant and serious diseases. None of this would have been possible without that seed investment from SFI, it took a risk on me and my ideas, and those ideas worked out. So Science Foundation Ireland, a fantastic supporter of Research Ireland. Starting a PhD in the Science Foundation Ireland Centre for Research Training and Machine Learning is really a PhD student experience like no other. We started off with a boot camp in machine learning, which allowed us to learn so much about all the different areas of machine learning that we could go into with our research. Not only that, but we get a lot of opportunity to both present our own research to our peers, as well as learn about each other's research throughout the course of the PhD, which really helps us to stay in tune with what's going on outside of our own individual PhDs. We also get a lot of opportunity to build relationships with peers and thought leaders in their fields through having the multiple universities involved in the programme. As well, because the ML Labs is so industry focused, it means that we get a lot of industry partners in to give us really interesting talks about how machine learning can be used in industry and how our work then can be translated into a, an industry environment after we finish our PhDs. Hi, everybody. I'm delighted to uh, speak to you. So I'm also very happy to contribute to this uh, SFI launch of a new strategy. I actually benefited from the previous one. I'm one of those uh, awardees of the research professorship, which gave me the uh, opportunity to relocate to Ireland, anyway, Galway, where I could integrate in the uh, innovation ecosystem that's so strong here. You see, my work is at the transition between preclinical and clinical implementation. So the environment is really enabling for me because I can connect with the great basic science that's being performed at the um, Curham SFI Research Center. And on the other hand, I, I can also help. And through the strong translational uh, activity at the LAM Institute, um, I feel really privileged to have this opportunity to have, to have, having had this opportunity through SFI. You see, my work is trying to prevent um, high risk people to die suddenly or having infarcts, and I'm using sensors to that purpose so I could build my own small, smart sensors lab which is great. I could also integrate with all the companies, small and large, that are located uh, in the West and in Ireland in general. 
So I'm very thankful to SFI. Um, in a way, this is at this stage of my career, I can, of course, publish a few more papers, but even beyond that, I'm given the opportunity to um, help my successors and um, provide them with an enabling environment as well. So I'm very thankful to SFI. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Valeria Nicolosi, and I'm a professor of nanomaterials and advanced microscopy at Trinity College Dublin in the School of Chemistry. I'm delighted to be here today and being part of the SFI uh, new strategy uh, shaping our future. This launch, this is a fantastic uh, news, and I look forward to hear more. So I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, I came to Ireland in 2012 uh, from the University of Oxford. And really what attracted me was the world-class research ongoing in Ireland and in Trinity College, the reputation and the fantastic infrastructure that was presented to me that was really, really attractive. And I really thought that this could indeed have been the place where I could have grown my career. And uh, that's, uh, that's really the, motiv the main motivation for me coming. Uh, initially, I was a recipient of an SFI uh, President of Ireland Young Researcher Award, and that really allowed me to kick off my career as an independent scientist. I was capable of hiring uh, my research group and uh, to start building from there. Uh, that together uh, with an ERC starting grant were uh, the, the first few steps as an independent scientist, which were really key to my success, to the success that I still have today. Um, uh, now I'm a, a principal investigator in two SFI centers, Amber and I4, and it's truly fantastic to be involved uh, with these two centers and being part of the programs. It's fantastic to see how uh, research um, is also enabling uh, partnerships with industry at very high level, and this is truly um, a, a fantastic opportunity for a scientist. Um, I have secured over the years six ERC awards. As I said before, I started uh, in 2012 with an ERC starting grant, followed by three proof of concept grants, which allowed me to bring my discoveries closer to the market. Uh, and then the, the, these were followed by an ERC consolidator grant more recently and another uh, proof of concept grant. Um, my research is focused on researching novel materials um, for energy storage applications. And I truly hope that my uh, discoveries will change uh, uh, eventually everyone's life, will allow us to have a greener life and will allow us to store energy more efficiently so that we don't have to rely uh, so much on fossil fuels and we will be able to store the energy um, in a very, very efficient manner from greener sources, the wind, the sun, the waves and so forth, and use it when we need it. Um, and uh, I really hope that this will truly change everyone's life um, uh, in, a, in a short uh, time future. Uh, I'm also today a director of the Center of Doctoral Training on Advanced Characterization of Materials, and I feel uh, I feel this position with uh, with honor, and uh, I'm, I'm I'm truly delighted. Uh, of, of, of being the director of this center, truly because I have the privilege to shape the new generation of uh, our researchers. And this is uh, a key aspect for our future and for the future of research in Ireland. So I, I take that as a, as a privilege and an honor. And having said that, uh, I have to say, I have to conclude thanking SFI because today I wouldn't be here uh, and I wouldn't be who I am today without SFI support. So I'm delighted to now be at this lounge and uh, I look forward to hear more about this new strategy. Thank you. Well, on behalf of the American Chamber of Commerce Ireland, I'm delighted to congratulate Science Foundation Ireland on the publication of their very exciting and ambitious strategy. And I want to thank SFI for the incredibly inclusive manner in which they shaped this strategy, including consulting with AmCham and our members. We're very clear, Ireland needs to continue to demonstrate investment in world-class research development and innovation. And AmCham members really appreciate our partnership 
with Science Foundation Ireland and their centres of excellence. And we appreciate the international linkages Science Foundation Ireland have built, including with the National Science Foundation in the United States. We greatly look forward to working with Professor Mark Ferguson and his team at SFI in delivering on this ambitious and important strategy. Very best wishes. My name is Danny McCoy and I'm the CEO of IBEC. IBEC were delighted to collaborate on the creation of this strategy by Science Foundation Ireland on shaping our future. The cross collaboration that's going to be required to deliver on the strategy is one that the business community wants to be fully part of. It's addressing some of the great trends of our society, be that the environmental challenge, but also the knowledge economy and digitalization. So the strategy, I think, hits all of this and we're really looking forward to its implementation and are fully supportive. So congratulations to all involved in Science Foundation Ireland. I'm really pleased to have the opportunity to participate in the launch of SFI's new strategy. This comes at a time when scientific research has never featured more vividly in the public consciousness, nor indeed has scientific research ever had such acute and immediate impact on our health and our wealth. I'm delighted to be one of the recipients of the newly established SFI Frontiers for the Future programme. Publicly funded scientific research schemes that support high risk, high reward discovery led by individual investigators has been critically important in driving scientific innovation. And some of the most important and impactful scientific discoveries over the past 60 years have emerged from university laboratories funded through similar schemes. The impact of such research funding extends beyond science, contributing to the training of the next generation of scientists to provide the brain power, driving industry from multinationals to startups in our economy. Under this programme, my team will develop new tools to study DNA and other biomolecules within the living cell. We hope to be able to understand how drugs or environmental factors affect the living cell and provide new tools to understand dynamic behaviour of cells. I'm delighted that SFI have funded the Frontiers for the Future programme and I'm looking forward to seeing the benefits of this scheme reap to our society and economy in the coming years. I'm delighted to have been invited to take part in the SFI strategy launch event today. Um, I'm a researcher from NUI Galway and we were very fortunate um, that last year, um, myself and my team won the SFI Future Innovator um, challenge-based funding prize. Since winning the prize, this has enabled us to, to significantly progress the development of the treatment we're developing. So the treatment we're developing is a novel therapeutic for chronic pain. And during the challenge-based program, the SFI really pushed and challenged us to really look at the problem of chronic pain and ensure that the treatment we're developing is not just meeting one need of one stakeholder, but meeting the needs of all stakeholders and ensuring that we have a measurable outcome um, when we address that need. So um, since completing the programme, we've done significant um, testing and development um, within NUI GOI. The prize funding has enabled us to collaborate with number, numerous experts within NUI GOI and really um, create a multidisciplinary team that progresses development and testing of this treatment. We have also been able to collaborate internationally with experts in the US and across Europe. And by doing so, we have met the, the requirements of private investors and generated the data required to secure investment on this treatment. And we plan to spin out a company from NUI Goy within the next 12 months. Um, so challenge-based funding is definitely the way of the future. It ensures that what you are developing um, and the problem you're addressing, you can have a measurable outcome for your treatment and have a real societal impact. I'd like to thank the SFI um, for the opportunity to take part in the programme and for the prize funding. Um, it has been an amazing experience and um, it, they have been an amazing support to myself and the team. And um, without the SFI, we wouldn't have been able to develop and progress the development of this treatment um, that is addressing a major societal issue, which is chronic pain.
delighted to support the launch of Science Foundation Ireland's new strategy, which is really important for how everybody engages with science in Ireland today. Midland Science has been supported by SFI in a number of Discover projects, and most recently in the development of science capital in our community. This sees that every point of interaction somebody has with science is important. So we've engaged people with everything from Star Wars to coffee to crime to sleep. It all adds up to help us see that science is all around us. It's in everything from astronomy to zoology. And it's really important that more and more people engage with science. We reach over 16,000 people per annum and we help people make informed choices, not just about the kind of education and careers they want, but the decisions they'll make in everyday life that are impacted in science. We are really delighted to be involved in the launch of this strategy and to play a small part in how people in the Midlands might continue to engage with science now and into the future. Hello, my name is Tiziana Comito and I am a PhD candidate at University College Dublin and I am enrolled in the CRT program. But what is CRT? Well, CRT is the Centers of Research Training in Foundation of Data Science and is funded by Science Foundation Ireland and Skillnet Ireland. Uh, this is a large, very large uh, scale initiative uh, between uh, the University of Limerick uh, University College Dublin and Maynooth University. As a CRT student, I got the chance to undertake master classes, not only um, delivered by the three main university uh, partners, but also from other universities, such as uh, the MIT and the Boston University. Uh, one of the key points um, in our program is definitely um, the cohort based experience. Uh, and uh, how important for the CRT to get a gender balance and different nationalities. But not only that, we are also students from all kind of background. There is biology, industry, um, engineers, uh, there is mathematician, physicist, but also statisticians and so on. I would say one of the main uh, um, uh, key aspects uh, in the whole program, it's about the 12 weeks um, internship to, that uh, each PhD student is allowed to undergo in, the, in its first year of training. Uh, uh, for me, it was uh, it was Meteran, uh, which was uh, my first choice, and I was extremely pleased to be selected as uh, one of the three PhD that uh, were uh, taken for the um, uh, for the stage. Uh, of course, this uh, would never be possible without uh, the SFI that uh, that uh, founded our program and for which I will always be grateful. Good afternoon, everyone. So my name is Kieran Shoyga. I'm the Deputy Director General of Science Foundation Ireland. And I'm going to take a few minutes just to walk us through a little bit more detail of the new strategy. Just before I do, I just want to thank everybody who uh, contributed to the videos before now. It's really fantastic to see those video contributions from PhD students to professors you know, from the early stage of a career and the support SFI provides our industry partners and the others that we're working with, you know, across the you know, challenge based funding and the rest. So it's, it's a phenomenal tribute and it's great to see so many people contributing. Thank you very much for your input. OK, so we're a little bit behind time. I want to take a few minutes to take us through the next level of detail on the, the strategy. Before I do, I'm going to just walk us back a little bit in terms of the history and you will have heard us talk about this very deep consultation process that we engaged in. So we uh, made the, the point of going out with a blank page, we did the desk based research, we did a lot of interviews and focus groups, we went to every institute of technology, every university around the country and we used national as well as international experts to challenge and guide our development. So this has given us a very much a, a, a consultative view, but also it's given us a time to reflect and think and learn a lot from the system about what we can do differently, what has worked well and what we should put into a new strategy. And what I want to do as well is just thank everybody who's been involved in that process. I know it was a long process and I know a lot of people contributed, but it's definitely made a big impact. And what did we hear? So here's some of the stuff we heard. Now, over the course of our consultation process, we had several submissions, and I think there was close to 2,000 distinct ideas came in from the community. And obviously, we can't do everything. So what we did is we worked to join these things up into more thematic pieces of work. 
So you can see there just some of the themes that have come out from the, the consultation process. You can see early career support that came up. You can see collaboration across the system came up. You know, and when we looked at this, we looked at it through multiple lenses. So sometimes we look at it through the lens, the lens of the academics and the researchers, and there there was a lot about more smaller awards, frontiers and discovery research, investigator-led research. It was a strong theme there. And we looked at other things as well from uh, the academics side through to the industry side with engagement with MNCs and SMEs about what they wanted to do with this. But then we looked at it through, when we looked at it through every lens, everybody told us we need to be collaborating better across the system. We need to be telling better success stories. So these were things that came up for everybody in every walk of life, and we, we took that to heart. You'll see as well things about more mission-based and challenge-based funding, promoting interdisciplinary research, or sometimes called transdisciplinary. There's a lot of stuff as well about how we need more research infrastructure. So there's an awful lot of feedback we got, and we have listened to all of it. And what I want to do is connect some of the feedback you've given us with the actual outputs in the strategy and the detail of where we've landed. And there isn't enough time today to go into everything and hopefully in a, in a different world or a different time, we'll be able to meet in person and go through it in more detail. But for now, let me give you a flavor of what's involved in the strategy. You'd have heard the, the minister and the, and the Taoiseach earlier on talking about shaping our future, it's the name, and the two key themes behind that, delivering today and preparing for tomorrow. And we talk about funding research that makes that real difference to our society and the economy, but now and into the future. So what is behind that and what are the elements and what does that mean? So behind these, there are a couple of key themes. We talk about excellent research, top talent, tangible benefits, and that's part of delivering today. And then for preparing for tomorrow, it's a cohesive ecosystem, it's future skills, it's anticipating what's next. And we use the wheels everywhere because all of this is interconnected. Research is not a linear piece of work, nor is it done distinctly on, an, on its own. It is all interconnected. You can't have excellent research without top talent and so on for all the rest of it. What I want to do then is take you through what each of these things mean in a little bit more detail. So delivering today. Delivering today means we will continue to do the really good, really impactful research that's done today. And as you will have heard the Taoiseach talk about earlier on, excellent research is at the core of that. But a few things are different in our new strategy. So one thing that's different is the, the need to move into a sort of a growth mindset. Up to now, our strategy has been very much a zero-sum game. So for somebody to do better, somebody else must do worse. And we rob Peter to pay Paul, and we need to move away from that. And that means we need to check and make sure that there are no gaps in the system. So what we're looking for under excellent research is that balanced portfolio, a balance between that early careers and the professors, from PhD to professors all the way through the system with no gaps in between. We're looking for a balance between individual-led research and more centres type research. We're looking for a balance between the different fields and so on. A balanced portfolio is critical to what we're trying to achieve. And it's core to what we're going to do in the new strategy as well as grow that excellent research, do more of what we've heard we need to do. So you'll have seen some of that feedback come through. We need to be doing some of these individual-led programmes and they are now enshrined in our strategy. Part of this as well is to have that top talent. Now we distinguish between talent and skills. And we talk about the talent being the people who are going to train the skills going forward. So we're talking about the research professors, the academics, the lecturers, those of you who are in the universities and the institutes of technology today. We need to make sure that we are fostering that talent, developing that talent, looking after and giving that talent the infrastructure it needs, and where there are gaps in the system, aggressively recruiting the talent that we need in Ireland. And then there's tangible benefits. And there's a bit of a shift there because we would have talked in the past about impact, well, now we talk tangible benefits. If COVID-19 has taught us one thing, it's about the benefits of research being more than just the economic benefits. Economic benefits for sure, but there's also the benefits to policy making, the benefits to discovery, the benefits to health, the benefits to climate. So the tangible benefits is an area where we're going to be working just to broaden out the understanding and the ways we measure and track tangible benefits. The second part of our strategy then, which is very much interrelated, is about preparing for tomorrow. And in preparing for tomorrow, we talk about having that more cohesive ecosystem. We would have heard a lot of discussion earlier on from the, from the minister and from the Taoiseach as well about that cohesive ecosystem. And it's probably one of the strongest thematic pieces of feedback we've had in our, in our own consultation. And a cohesive ecosystem means that we work collaboratively with other funders, we work with the uh, internationally and nationally, but it's also about storytelling. And there's one thing we also heard is that collectively, we haven't done a good enough job at telling the story of why research is important. We haven't communicated that to the broader public. 
And again, you'll have heard Simon Harris allude to earlier on to the fact that he's going to be engaging in a large scale public dialogue. This is part of building that cohesive ecosystem. And if we want to be ready for whatever comes at us next in the future, we need to have that system working well together. Then you have future skills. And the future skills, they are the people that come out of the system, the PhDs and the postdocs, the master's students who are trained by the talent that I referred to earlier on. And we wanna make sure that the PhDs and postdocs that come out of the Irish system, these are the most sought after individuals anywhere in the world. It means that they are prepared for the new future, for the new jobs that haven't even been invented yet. And equally, they have that virtuous cycle where they attract the industry who want to be near where the best people are. And future skills is the key to our economic and societal prosperity going forward. And finally, there's an element which we call anticipating what's next. We're a small country, we can't do everything, but we can be very constructive and creative about how we look around the corner and get that first mover advantage on what's coming around the corner, the new technologies, the emerging fields of what's next. And that's not easy to do, and it means that we need to be thinking about what kind of programs we're going to run, how we're going to run those programs to encourage that research to come in from the bottom up and from the top down to anticipate what's next, what analytics and data we can look at. And it means in some areas we'll be taking a punt on new fields. And we'll probably add to our, our questions. You know, Typically today we look to see just two things. Is what we're doing excellent? Is it excellent research done by excellent researchers as you know, uh, reviewed by international peer review? And that excellence will remain core to what we do no matter what. And we look at impact, Is the, what's the impact? What's the benefit? What's this gonna do at some point? And as we really push the boat out as well, we can't do everything, but when we go to anticipating what's next, we'll have to ask ourselves the question, what can we do or why would we do it in Ireland? What's just strategically important about Ireland that would make us go after this piece of work? Is it the core skills we have here? Is it geographic? Is it related to our demographics? Why would we go after this? So anticipating what's next is going to be us looking to get that first mover advantage, moving away from being a fast follower and thinking how we can do things first. Very quickly, I wanted to talk about how we started this. So our strategy has been a long time in the making and COVID has definitely slowed down today, which is a launch that is you know, some time in the making. But some of the programs and things that we're already doing have come from the feedback you've given us. So we heard loud and clear that we needed that individual led research. So the Frontiers for the Future program was shaped very heavily based on the feedback we got from the, the consultation we had in the universities and the Institutes of Technology. And you told us about how you wanted more smaller awards, how you wanted to break things up between projects and awards to have different career levels identified and indeed bring in new gender balances. And we brought those into how we do the Frontiers for the Future program. It's in its second year already and it will continue and will grow as part of the new strategy. Similarly, you know, I, I remember we were in, I think it was Limerick at the time, we got a suggestion, you know, we do great work taking knowledge out of the universities and bringing it into the uh, industry. Why don't we do the same thing in, in public sector life? So then we launched the Public Service Fellowship Programme to do exactly that, bring evidence-based policy into public sector. You'll have seen the COVID rapid response call as well, which is about that collaboration. For the first time, five of the main funders, EI, SFI, IRC, HRB, and uh, the IDA, working under a common banner for the COVID rapid response call. So this is the start of many things that are yet to come. There are more programs in the pipeline this year, more programs with the IRC, programs to fill those gaps that we identified in our consultation process. And importantly, growth is where we're going over the next few years. So to everybody who's been part of this process, thank you very much for your input. We have listened. It is part of the strategy that you see before you now. We look forward to further dialogue if we can. And actually over the next little while with Claire, we'll have a discussion on you know, some of the questions and challenges that may come up. So thank you for everybody for your input to date, and I look forward to discussing it further. Thank you, Kieran, and thank you as well to um, our ISL interpreter, Vanessa O'Connell, for signing so well during the launch too. My name is Claire O'Connell, and I also want to say congratulations to everyone. This is a big day, and well done to everybody involved in developing and launching this strategy. I mean, it, it is wonderful to see it forged as it, as it has been in this very strange time. Um, and it gives us a roadmap to really better times. And as Mark said, daring mighty things. So joining me for this section of the virtual launch are Dr. Kieran Shoiga, who we've just heard from, and Kieran is the Deputy Director.
Director General of Science Foundation Ireland. Um, and we have Dr. Ruth Freeman. Ruth is Director of Science for Society. And of course, science and society are very closely intertwined. And we have Dr. Siobhan Roach, who is Director um, at Science Foundation Ireland of Science for Economy. And again, the economy is closely wedded to science and innovation. So thank you all for taking part in this chat where we have the opportunity, and I say we because I mean not just me, but the audience as well, to ask you questions and to think in, I suppose, a slightly more focused way about the, strat the strategy and what it means for various things. Now, we are a little short on time, but I would urge the audience to submit questions and Peter Clifford from SFI will be on hand to field those. Um, but let me kick off, I suppose, thinking about delivering today. You know, that's about building up excellent research, attracting top talent and um, focusing on those tangible benefits. Um, but maybe, Kieran, if I could if I could start with you, let's talk about where researchers are today. Obviously, the pandemic has affected research no more than any other part of life. Um, and some researchers have been able able to pivot their work towards COVID-19. So whether it's through the Rapid Response Fund or people kind of using their skills in different ways, whether that's, you know, people at Maynooth University modeling uh, COVID stats and the impact on Ireland. And um, we have people um, at the Quorum Centre using laser physics to figure out what materials to make masks from and things like that. But there are people who, for whatever reason, have not been able to pivot their research to the COVID sphere and have possibly sort of lost out on the traje trajectory and outputs of the research. But as we move out of the pandemic and there is a possible inequity there, how is SFI going to manage that inequity and ease it for people? Uh, thanks, Claire. So, I mean, that's the first thing I want to do on that is just to, to recognize those researchers who have done really well over the course of COVID-19. We're immensely proud of the way research has stepped up to the system. You know, it was a year ago now when they came to us when the, when the pandemic launched with a question of how we can help and research has been to the fore. So you know, that's, that's something we are very proud of. Going forward, part of what we need to do is we need to be keeping that data-led balanced portfolio. So you heard me talk about that earlier. And that's something we'll be monitoring as we go through the system. So we constantly monitor, are there gaps in the system? Has COVID-19 created a particular bubble in the system? And then we need to look at, it will probably be field specific. It'll probably be you know, a career level specific. It'll probably be you know, specific to different walks of life in different ways. So one of the things we will continuously do is monitor that system, monitor to see where the gaps are, and then we can tweak and adjust calls as we go forward. We're not out of COVID yet, so there's still a ways to go before we know exactly what the impacts will be. But you know, there's work underway, which I know Siobhan and Ruth might talk about as well, but in terms of the future view of what this means, it will be about monitoring the impact and then adjusting our calls accordingly. Very good. I mean, I did know one of, oh, sorry, I did notice that one of the words in the strategy used was tunable. So maybe this is a, a case where it is tunable. Sorry. Go on. Sorry, Karen, no, I was just going to add, I, I think, you know, predictability will be very important uh, over the next few years. And certainly we've aspired to have a set of calls that will be predictable and running on an annual basis like Frontiers for the Future. So if there are researchers who haven't been able to pivot and maybe have felt that they haven't been able to apply for calls, you know, over the last year, that at least they feel they're not missing out on opportunities that aren't going to come around again. And, and that predictability is something that we're very happy to work with the minister and uh, in our now new sister agencies and the new department to try and have in place. That's great. That's great to build in that certainty at such an, an uncertain time. Yeah. Ruth, maybe I can stay with you. Um, oh, sorry, Siobhan, did you want to come in there? No, I was just going to say, I, I suppose, is the fact that there's a lot of uncertainty that we're still living through at the moment and from the very early stages, I, I suppose, with respect to researchers that are funded by us that may not have been able to respond to the, the COVID call, as you, you highlighted, that, you know, we have been working very closely with them to kind of look at options for building in flexibility into their current award programmes, restructuring, uh, supporting no cost extensions. But I, I suppose we are still going through quite a significant period of of uncertainty and I suppose what we're trying to do is to continue to work through this with the researchers as we kind of understand kind of the longer term impact of COVID so it's very much an ongoing exercise. 
Great, and that is that must be reassuring for researchers who are in that position as well. Um, Ruth, maybe I can ask you about the importance of supporting fundamental research. I mean, that is something that we've all talked about for for a long time. The importance that the need for that curiosity driven, discovery driven, blue sky stuff, and it is great to see that shaping our future does recognise the importance of this in tandem with kind of more applied, maybe problem driven, challenge driven research. But with that focus on tangible benefits. How do you, how does that square with the really sort of just purely curiosity and driven? Let's look at this because it's interesting. You know how how as would I as as a potential SFI researcher pitch that if you're looking for tangible benefits? I mean, I think it was great to hear throughout the speeches, even at the level of the tea shop, to say we've moved on from that discussion about applied and basic, and what we're interested in is excellent research you know, high risk, high reward research and research that looks at fundamental discovery. And I suppose it depends on the lens that you put on, on tangible. I mean, I think for us, new important knowledge that, that moves the boundary of what we understand objective truth to be in, in a new area it is a real and tangible benefit. So, you know, I think possibly, you know, it's about reframing the conversation around what's important. You know, the, the training of skilled people the tangible benefit. Uh, I mean, the work that we do through the Discover program, and, and, and Jackie spoke about it there, about helping to create a society where people feel able to engage with scientific progress and what it means for them. I mean, I think for those of, for those of us that sit inside SFI, those are all very real and tangible benefits that come out of, of the funding that we administer. Uh, so, so I think it's, it's important that, that that's part of the message of the new strategy, and, and I hope it'll come through when people get a chance to sit down and look at it that yes we, we need a portfolio approach and I think when we talk to the public about research that's what they want too that the public understand the need to invest in in challenge research applied research that's looking at real problems where, where we need solutions and I mean again you know the COVID situation sort of talks to the power of science when when global science puts its mind to solving a problem i mean wouldn't we like to see that effort applied to some other challenges that we have so so that's important but but i think there's very much an openness but through schemes like frontiers for the future the new early career scheme that we'll be developing with the irish research council for people to bring their innovative ideas around fundamental discovery research to, to us in sfi that's good. It's good to hear that there's such a broad definition of tangible as well, you know, because it is it is a word that can be interpreted in different ways. Um, and, and following on from that, I mean, I mean, Ruth, there you mentioned about um, the development of skills um, and talent being a, a tangible benefit. Um, Siobhan, maybe I can ask you about uh, this, this strategy for, you know, it's great to be recruiting top talent. You know, obviously, this is important because people do excellent scientific research and, and bringing established people in is, is a good strategy. Um, but I suppose what about the early stage researchers? And again, it's wonderful that early stage researchers are being given opportunities to develop their skills that they can use outside of academia. But for those who want to stay in Ireland, stay in academia, build up their own groups, I mean, that is a difficult journey at the best of times. Um, so how is SFI going to safeguard that journey for the people who want to do it? So th there's a variety of approaches and I suppose what you're hearing a lot about today is kind of balanced portfolios and you heard Minister Harris reference the fact that we are going to do this relaunch our early career programme and do a new partnership with the IRC to support career development of early career researchers. We are also seeing through the significant investment that we've made into SFI research centres that supports a lot of career development of early stage uh, researchers who, who develop programmes of research and and research teams within the uh, banner of a, a centre and that provides significant opportunity for them. I, I suppose the, the reality is, is that based on our data, only five to maybe 10% of researchers will actually have a career in academia. So we feel it is important as part of this balanced approach that we do look at, at supporting opportunities in, in other aspects and other areas outside of academia. And I, I suppose this is where some of our, our programmes around our placement programmes programs where we place researchers in government departments, we place them within companies, we place them within SFI and it gives them that broader experiential learning approach that provides new opportunities that they may not have considered uh, previously. So it, it's a really important part of our overall balanced uh, portfolio approach. 
Okay, great. Thank you. Um, and maybe staying with you, um, Siobhan, I suppose, uh, moving to preparing for tomorrow. I know the two are not separate, as, as Kieran said, it's all, it's all a big wheel. Um, but I suppose, you know, it is important and, and the cohesive ecosystem, you know, in the consultation uh, process, that was something that, that kept coming back up. And, you know, we're not going to get too far if everybody is fragmented. Um, and it's wonderful that, I suppose, the move, the move to the new department um, is, is strengthening the relationships between SMEs SFI and higher education institutes, but what about the relationships with industry in the context of the new department? Do you have any concerns there, Siobhan? Absolutely not. So as you'll have seen in our strategy, and you'll probably hear more about it in the coming weeks, is that we have a series of very ambitious actions around deepening industry academic partnerships. And this relates to both supporting the competitiveness of SMEs and also then attracting and retaining FDI. So successful delivery of both of these will require a partnership with our enterprise agencies. So despite the fact that we have moved into a, a new government department, we continue to engage very closely with Enterprise Ireland and with IDA. We have formal meetings at least once a month, if not more. We are very kind of focused on making sure that the ecosystem is developed in a cohesive way. And furthermore, the new strategy we have for the first time, I suppose we've rolled out a series of shared KPIs with the enterprise agencies. This, these relate to supporting deep company engagement in research and innovation. This is a shared KPI that we have with IDA. We also have a, another shared KPI with Enterprise Ireland in relation to supporting the creation of fast growing high value companies. So these will kind of help bring that focus and that joined up approach that is needed within the system. Okay, that, that's that's good to hear. Um, Kieran, maybe if I can ask you about the horizon scanning. You know, um, I'm intrigued to know how how you're going to look into the future, and um, because I think if 2020 taught us anything, it taught us that we we absolutely need to be prepared for enormous change at the drop of a hat. And um, so I'm curious about the nuts and bolts of how you intend to do this kind of look into the future and and identify where Ireland, you know, could potentially grow its expertise for a global stage. Yeah, it's a great question. And in fact, uh, the reality is it's not easy yeah, and it's not going to be easy or easy. Everybody would have done it. So there's a number of different avenues we would uh, adopt to getting there. Um, I suppose one of them is we were going to be um, it's, it's very data led. So engaging in you know deep data and analytics on the emerging fields of science, where they're going with the, tra the trajectory that we're following. Some of that work is going to come using international partners. Some of it's going to come nationally from what our own teams can do. The other part of it then is working with the expert groups that we have. So we have you know, the people who are working in this space, the academics, the researchers, the people who are that we fund, they are already starting to look around the corner of what's next and engaging with them through various methodologies to have those conversations and direct that conversation to say, okay, where to next, what's coming? And then we'd probably tee that up as well with some really um, advanced calls to push the boat out a little bit further and just say, okay, we're going to do bottom up, show us the challenges, show us what you think could be done and create that opportunity for that high risk, high gain. But this stuff is the kind of thing that really, when we're going to take a punt and look further around the corner, some of it's going to fail and we need to get comfortable with this idea. That's part of the way the scientific process works and more of it in this area is going to fail than not, I suppose. But then what we need to do is get that first mover advantage when we are successful. So not to be afraid to try, to try things, to challenge ourselves, to push the boat out, to really have a, a look at the analytics as well as what the expert tell us and combine that into new calls and uh, we'll see how we go. Good stuff. We're back to daring mighty things. Excellent. Uh, we yeah. will go to the audience questions in a moment. I'm sure Peter has has, has stacks of them now at this stage. Um, but before we do, Ruth, I just wanted to <clears throat> excuse me, ask you about <clears throat> excuse me, diversity in research. I mean, SFI has long recognised the need for that diversity. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so, um, you know, what kind of measures are under the strategy to I suppose, protect and grow the diversity in research? I mean, one of the things that I am really, I love in the strategy is right near the beginning, it talks about science for, for everyone. And of course that means lots of different things and it'll impact in different ways across our programs. Uh, you know, and then that's, you know, a lot of it will start with that, that public, that national conversation with everyone about science because science impacts on all of us. And that will be really important. But but we will also look at the measures in our research funding schemes. Uh, as you mentioned, Claire, we've we've already, I think, taken quite a pro 
progressive approach in things like our Frontiers of the Future program. We've put in uh, aggressive gender measures there to try and balance um, what, what we see coming through in that program. We've done the same with our early career program up until now, and we will do the same in that new program with the Irish Research Council. And, and following on from this uh, overarching strategy, we will be launching a, a more conclusive um, equality, diversity and inclusion strategy to, to layer on top of this. And you know, e even simple things, I suppose, like working with our partners in high, higher education to look at how researchers are working, uh, simple things like whether additional funding might be needed to support um, you know, a researcher that has a particular disability that may need a modified workstation, for example. You know, I think there's things that we can do and we'll be having more conversations about what's needed. I mean, as Kieran said, we'll constantly be looking at those gaps to see how we can help fill them. And, and I think that's an area where really partnership with, with, our, with our partners in higher education will really help inform what we need to do. Excellent. Thank you, Ruth. And now I think we'll bring in Peter. Peter, what questions do we have for the, the panel, please? Great. Thanks, Claire. And we've a load of questions coming in. I don't think there'll be time available to get to them all. Uh, I'll just pick a sample. So question number one, the SFI strategy consultation workshops were a valuable way of seeking and offering diverse ranges of input from the researcher community and contributing to a growth mindset on all sides. How will SFI maintain this? Any thoughts there, panel? Yeah, uh, maybe I should have a go at that one because actually, I mean, I would agree. I think the workshops were a brilliant learning exercise. Um, they were very forthright, uh, the nice way to put it. But you know, we had really, really good conversations. We learned a lot, you know, and I think it's something that uh, I have found. It's a bit of a it's probably the worst thing about COVID nineteen right now is that we don't get to go out and about and meet the research community like we used to. We can do some of it like this uh, digitally. But um, if I had my way, I would love to do more of this going forward, you know, more visits to the universities and the institutes, you know, to go and see them, to talk about the new strategy when we have that opportunity and to test our thinking as we go forward. Because, you know, we talk about a balanced portfolio, but we talk about being data led. So it's always good to test our thinking. So I think we'll come back around as soon as we get out of this environment and we'll be back talking and doing more testing. Great, good stuff. Thank Any more you. questions? Thank you. Sure. Another question, I guess, building on the balanced portfolio that Kieran just mentioned, how will we know that we are getting the balance right? How do you measure that? Yeah, I mean, I guess I can start there. I mean, look, we, we I think we need to move out of that scarcity mindset to the growth mindset. I mean, one thing Mark mentioned early on was at the moment we have far more excellent projects that we can fund. So, I mean, we would love to be getting to a point where we're really looking at those very excellent projects, the one in the ones in maybe the top 15 percent. I mean, it would be great if across a range of balanced schemes, you were funding all the high quality research that was there because that that's good value for money for the Irish taxpayer because this is capacity that we have in the system so it's good for everyone if, if we can then support those people uh you know to deliver on those great ideas that that they've brought to us and we've reviewed so I think that'll be one indicator and um, but I think it's it's also just having those schemes running every year that's what we need to keep an eye on maybe just to, to add to that one a well, so there's, there's there's a heavy data sort of view of that world as well. So looking at the inflection points as we in fund different areas and seeing where the gaps are, or if there's sufficient funding for you know the, the cohorts that are in each area, early careers, mid careers, advanced, uh, and continuously monitoring that as well. So there's a, there's a data led element to this balanced portfolio. Great, Thank you both. thanks, Peter. Any more? Yep, plenty more. As long as we have time, we can keep going. Um, <laughs> as part. Maybe, yeah. As part of the development of future talent and addressing skills gaps, will there be future centres for research training calls or continued support for current centres for research training? The, the basic answer is if we have the budget to do them, we'd love to do more of them. Absolutely. No. And um, one of the opportunities that we're looking at is rolling that program out on an all-island basis. And you heard the minister speak to that earlier today. There's very strong support for that. Thank you. Uh, another question. To help develop collaborations with high potential startups and multinationals in Ireland, will the SFI Industry Fellowship Scheme be open for applications in 2021? Absolutely. The uh, SFI Industry Fellowship Programme has recently undergone a revamp and we're hoping to relaunch it in the, the next month or so, but absolutely it will reopen. Maybe two more questions, Peter? 
more questions? Okay. Um, sorry, just trying to get through them here. They're great so questions. Are there plans? Yeah, are they pl are there plans existing to build on the COVID rapid response funding call to to take those learnings forward and to to get results which can be applied to Irish society? So you... I, I think so. Oh, do you want to go ahead, Kieran? No, all yours. You go ahead. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> well, I was. Gonna... I'll, I'll... You do. It. <laughs> Right, very quickly then, the response, this is why we need a moderator. Uh, the response to that one is, um, there's definitely an intent to learn from the lessons that we, we, got, we took out from that. So we wouldn't, we wouldn't be running the response call itself per se, but the lessons that we learned, the way we worked collaboratively across the system, our ability to do things at real pace as well, you know, that ability to go from a starting, a standing start to a call that was adjudicated and run out again at real pace, and at the same time, having our, our colleagues in the IRC and the HRB and EI and IDA all part of that process, triaging together. There's a lot of lessons learned from that that we would definitely look to put into that sort of collaborative ecosystem mindset. Ruth, did you have anything to add? No, I was going to say, I think the speed piece was really critical. It showed us that we could do things faster than we thought. I mean, I think we did learn, though, perhaps the first call was a bit too fast for some people. And again, coming back to the kind of inclusivity piece i think we we saw people struggled more with that but i think the time frame of the second call which was a couple of months so still a lot faster than what we normally do for me that was a bit of a sweet spot at how we move fast and and, and definitely the collaboration we want to build on good stuff and um, last question peter yeah um membership of international scientific organizations european scientific organizations do sfi have any thoughts on the importance of joining these who wants to take that one depends on which ones so there are some that we're already members <laughs> of and there are others that we continue to be members of and others we look at I and mean, there's, there's quite a there's quite a list of those so um we are members of quite a number um, and there's always those coming across our desk to say, you know, we should look at those as well. So we will look at them as they come up, because as you will have heard from uh, from the minister and from the Tisha earlier on, you know, that international uh, profile, that international collaboration is important to us and to our department and to us as an island. So we'll definitely be keeping an eye on those. Actually, we, we probably do have time for a couple more questions if uh, if the if the panel are happy to, to keep answering. So, Peter, sure. if, if you want to, if there, there's, yeah, there's another one on your list. And there's, there's plenty. Um, another one, considering the impact of Brexit, does SFI have an ambition to grow its footprint and presence in the UK, European Union, Union and beyond? That's it. So I might start on that. Certainly uh, a lot of the, the focus on the All Island research collaboration is in, uh, I suppose, trying to respond to the challenges that will be brought to the All Island economy as a result of Brexit. So uh, those discussions are at an advanced stage and, and they will enhance collaboration with Great Britain as well. So it's not just on a, a north-south basis and will then help connect into European networks as well. Good stuff. Um, Peter? Yeah, um, a question about engaged research. Um, can we describe how the new strategy supports engaged research to address our most complex societal challenges together, uh, including European policy for just transitions? Mm. Ruth, I think that's your one. Yeah, I mean, I, I think throughout the strategy, hopefully we will see that theme of engaged research. Um, you know, it's something that spans from the the public engagement programs all the way through to the research centres and, and work that Siobhan and her team are doing there. So, I mean, I, I think some of this will be driven not by sort of rules around programs, but around a culture that, that we are going to try and foster with our partners in higher education, uh, you know, a, alongside things like challenge research funding programs, public service fellowships, because because if you think about the combination of what's in the strategy, you know, you have Frontiers of the Future, you know, supporting excellent individual researchers who are building up capacity in all sorts of areas, some of which we know we need and some of which we don't, we may need, or, you know, we, we'll build that platform to have future resilience. And I think that that's very much at the core of it. And then I think programs like the Public Service Fellowship and the Challenge Programme actually enable researchers to link with society to see how we can make those links work when it makes sense to do so. And I mean, the Public Service Fellowship was a great example of embedding researchers in government departments to kind of help 
the departments and the, the, the public servants frame where research might be able to help them to, to sort of enable them to ask the questions that needed to be asked to help researchers respond. So I, I think a lot of what we're seeing in the new strategy is about dialogue as opposed to sort of telling. And I think that's at the core of engaged research is, is having two way dialogue. So we will certainly be trying to foster a lot more of that throughout the course of this strategy. Maybe if I can add a little bit to that as well. I mean, it ties up a lot of the questions that have kind of come in if you look at it that way. But you know, if you join up some of the thinking around engaged research, but there's also that collaborative across the system working with the other funders, there's that notion of engaging with the public around what they want to see done. There is, you know, all of that would probably be very prevalent because once we move out of COVID, the next great challenge of the climate then is upon us. And many of those things, you know, the engaged research, the collaboration, the engaging with the public, the sort of multidisciplinary approach to research, that's going to be to the fore in solving that as we go forward. So I can see a lot of those questions would probably come to, to the fore on that as well. Steph. Peter? Great, thank you. Um, yeah, a, a couple of different, slightly different questions about the Institutes of Technology and the technological universities. Um, in particular, thinking about, will do we envisage some of those researchers leading the SFI research centers? And how do we how do we sort of respond to the, the large teaching commitments in the IOTs and the TUs? But maybe at a high level, I, I could just ask the panel, how shaping our future plans to work with the researchers in the TUs and IOTs? Kieran, do you have okay. thoughts on that? Yeah, I'll happily start on that one. So yes, um, the TUs are a, sort of a, a major evolution in the in the uh, the landscape in Ireland, and um, they have some fairly substantial targets coming their ways as well in terms of the amount of uplift in research that they need to be doing. And as of today, the amount of research that's coming from SFI into the IOTs or TUs isn't sufficient to get there. So there needs to be a new dialogue in terms of what we need to do in that in TU and IOT space. Um, it's really important because you know we talk about the need to get the knowledge into the regions as much as anything else that we build that sort of regional specialization and smart specialization is something that's talked about quite a lot and the TUs have that local engagement that local uh, SME involvement as well as being in the regions there and with those massive targets and that shift it's going to be a really exciting time for them as they all you know they become TUs and there's more TUs introduced into the system so we are thinking through you know what's worked well so we, we, you'll hear us talk about that balance and data led and we've looked at the data what works well at the TUs how do they engage well which programs work particularly well take those learnings and then embed them into some of the other programs we're doing so that we can manage and, you know, and sort of help them through the process and get them to the point where we are supporting them at that sort of level of research and intensity they need to get to so it's going to be a really good time and if I, forward. If, yeah i mean if i could just add there i mean we're very conscious of things like teaching loads in the system the way the way it is currently so we'll bear all of these things in mind that we're designing schemes i mean i think the other thing is we see capability in the iot's and tu's as kieran said that those regional linkages but also skill sets that that maybe don't exist as strongly in some of the universities so how do we bring those two things together uh, to really optimize what we have here in ireland and i mean another thing i would see i mean if i was a young researcher you know developing my career here you know these targets for the iot's and tu's to become more research active will provide more opportunities for researchers to have those careers doing doing teaching and research if that's what they want to do here in Ireland. So as Kieran says, I'd see it as a really, really positive time. And again, I would say the new department, that structure where further and higher education is now all in together with a seat around the cabinet table. You know, I think it's a great time for the system to to work together to to, to take this opportunity that's in front of us now and make sure we deliver all of us. Yeah. But I, I think it's also worth uh, highlighting the fact that many of the institutes of technology that are now uh, developing into TUs have been uh, instrumental in the success of many of the centres and some of them, I suppose at least one of them, ha has led a, a centre on an interim basis uh, and they have contributed hugely to the, the success of those centres. So they, they, I suppose through that model it has helped develop that the uh, Institute of Technology research ecosystem as well through the engagement within centres. Brilliant. I think we are running out of time now, so maybe last question, Peter. Very last question is about research infrastructure and does SFI plan to address research infrastructure at the universities and the IOTs or will there be PRTLI calls in the short term? 
Uh, we are planning to run a research infrastructure call uh, short with this year, so, so that's great news. I mean, I think at the moment it'll be a small call, so it, it's a place that we've certainly been working with the new department to to talk to them about how we increase the level of support going in there, because because obviously if we want to be you know, funding at the cutting edge, people need the right equipment so that they can deliver. So uh, yes, we'll have a new call. Might not be big enough this year, but we'll certainly be working to try and expand capacity in future years. Excellent. Good stuff. Well, apologies for running over time, but it just shows the appetite there for, for the, the questions coming in. It's wonderful to see that interest. So thank you to everybody who mm -hmm. did submit mm -hmm. questions. Sorry, your one didn't get answered. Thank you, for Peter, for handling the questions so well. And thank you to the panellists as well, to, to Kieran, uh, to Siobhan and to Ruth for, uh, for talking with us today about this. Um, so, Kieran, I'm going to hand back to you to wrap up. Thanks, everybody. Great. Thank you very much. Claire. And thanks everybody. So just to close, and I, I know we've run over, but just to say that it's a word of thank you. And it's a word of thank you all to the Taoiseach and uh, Minister Simon Harris for joining us earlier and for giving a very, very positive message of you know, the importance of research, the investment. This is core to what we're about. This is core to our strategy. It's built into our ambition that if we're going to deliver for Ireland, we're going to need that level of investment and getting their involvement and buy-in and support so viscerally is really, really important. So it's a huge thank you there. I want to thank the uh, the strategy team and uh, for, for the work in putting this strategy together and also everybody involved in the consultation process who's input into it. It's been a long journey, but it really has been well worth it and we have learned a lot. And so just a final word of thanks because I just want to thank the, the staff and SFI. We have very, very diligent, hardworking staff who no matter what uh, COVID-19 has thrown, have never missed a beat. So um, just want to say thank you for the work. Thank you for supporting us through COVID-19. Thank you for everything in the strategy, but thank you for the stuff you do on a day-to-day -day basis. It makes a huge difference. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attention. Thank you for joining us here today. I look forward to seeing you maybe out on the road virtually or, or really, uh, physically at some point and to talking about the strategy more, to introducing it to you in more detail. Uh, but until then, look after yourselves and stay safe. Thank you.